This summer, China has suffered massive floods. So how does the Chinese government help the victimized farmers? Also, on August 14th, Bloomberg reported a story that the Chinese Communist Party, or the CCP's top leader, Xi Jinping, plans to remove 40,000 small hydro stations. Are there any connections between the two? Regarding the Chinese government's financial assistance to the victims, let us take Henan province as an example. It is located in central China and has suffered the worst flooding. Farmland in China is traditionally measured by mu, which is equivalent to 0.0667 hectares. When describing the area, we will use unit in the place of mu, when unit means one mu. Moving on. According to the post-reconstruction press conference in Henan province, as of August 9th, the floods have affected 1,664 towns and close to 15 million people in 150 counties, with roughly 16 million units of crops affected and direct economic losses of close to RMB 134 billion or USD 21 billion dollars. On the same day, it was announced by the provincial government that a subsidy of RMB 50 per unit, such as US $8 for each unit of crop failure, will be paid out upon verification. The less affected 9 million units of crops are subsidized RMB 25 per unit, that is USD $4. For the livestock and poultry killed by the disaster, the subsidy is RMB 80 per pig, that is USD $12. The $12 is not a direct subsidy to the farmers, but is used to reimburse the costs of salvage, removal, transportation, and detoxification. The vast majority of farmers are disappointed to see the notice. A farmer told overseas Chinese media, Nowadays to plant a land of one unit, you need to plow, buy fertilizer, buy seeds, buy herbicides, apply pesticides, water the ground, etc., which cost at least RMB 400. That is to say, RMB 50 is very little compensation. The farmer said RMB 50 is only enough to pay for a bag of seeds. The crops are all flooded and there is no good field left. Without the flood, one unit land can produce more than 1,000 kilograms of corn. According to the price and yield of corn in 2021, it can generate an income of RMB 1,500 to 3,000. Another victim, Miss Yang, told overseas media reporters that her family's land, roughly seven to eight units, was all flooded and had no harvest, but they did not get a single penny of relief money. The key is that we haven't seen any money, and we haven't heard from anyone we know who has received any money, she said. I just saw the news about the subsidies for the victims, she added. On China's social media, Chinese netizens wrote, I think to get this RMB 50, one has to go through all kinds of hoops to provide a proof before getting the approval. Maybe in a year, a farmer might receive RMB 20 in the end, and you have to get vaccinated to receive it. Staff at the provincial government said that these subsidies only apply to people living in the flood zone. If one is not in the flood zone, no subsidy is available even if there is flood damage. Public feedback suggests that the nationally designated flood zone has no harvest for the year and that many non-flood zones would have no harvest either. For example, some sections on both sides of the Wei River are not flood zones, but the upstream flood discharge has led to the water of the Wei River to swell, causing flooding of houses and farmlands. The Chinese media said that although the amount of subsidy received by each farmer is small, the total amount of subsidy paid out is relatively large. 
Statistics show the total area of 21 cities or counties that have lost their harvest is 5.7 million units, and the total amount of subsidies is RMB 285 million, based on RMB 50 per unit. The total amount of subsidies for other parcels of land affected is RMB 226 million, which adds up to RMB 511 million, or USD 79 million dollars. However, this still makes the public doubt the sincerity of the government. In terms of donations, as of 5 p.m. on August 9th, the official website of Hunan Provincial Charity Federation shows that it has received RMB 4.26 billion or USD 657 million dollars in flood relief donations. In addition, these charity organizations have their own funds at their disposal. Perhaps you're wondering if insurance companies can help at this time. According to media reports in mainland China, as of August 8th, more than 10,000 cases of agricultural insurance have been reported in Henan province, with more than 8,000 cases closed in RMB 272 million or USD 42 million dollars paid out, with different payout standards for different crop varieties. According to the Provincial Relief Agency staff, the government subsidizes most of the insurance for wheat, rice, and peanuts. Growers only need to pay a small portion, so the insured percentage is relatively high, among which the participation rate of wheat is close to 100%. In case of crop failure, one unit of wheat can receive a payout of RMB 400. As mentioned earlier, under normal circumstances, the income of one unit of wheat is RMB 1500 to 3000. Corn is a purely commercial crop and very few farmers are insured. That is to say, the vast majority of farmers who grow corn will receive no insurance compensation. China's farmers are at the bottom of Chinese society. The media in mainland China has done a survey. Due to farmers' low income and lack of awareness of insurance, very few are willing to buy insurance. Housing is one typical example. When the agricultural risk and the payout rate are high, insurance companies are not proactive in underwriting farmers. A flood victim told a reporter at Kaijing, a mainland Chinese media, that this year is doomed to have no harvest because the fields are submerged. His family has eight units of land and planted six units of peanuts and two units of corn. When asked about the loss, he said he lost everything. The loss amounted to RMB 14,000 or USD 2,000 dollars when he counted it all up. The victim said that the damage was not only farmland, houses were also submerged. As of August 2nd, the flood water was still discharging. Water and electricity were all out. While waiting for the water to recede, it would probably take a week to restore water, electricity, and other essential supplies. Because it is already late into the season, the farmland cannot be replanted, and the farmers want to reduce their losses as much as possible. They hope to work as laborers in the city for a month or two before planting winter wheat. However, since July 31st, several confirmed COVID-19 cases have started to appear in Hunan province. Strict outbreak prevention measures require them to stay put at their temporary settlement sites as much as possible, so the idea of making up for crop losses through part-time work will also become impossible. This is the situation in Hunan province alone, where on August 6th, China's Ministry of Emergency Management released a low-key report on the national natural disasters in July in which not only 14.814 million people were affected in Hunan, but also 34.205 million people nationwide. The report said that floods and typhoons were the main disasters, while wind, hail, droughts, earthquakes, geographical disasters, and forest fires also occurred to varying degrees, resulting in 34.205 million people affected, 
432 people missing and dead, 105,000 buildings collapsed, and 902,000 buildings damaged to varying degrees. 3,370,100 units of crops affected. The direct economic loss was RMB 148.84 billion or USD 23 billion dollars. The report also stated flood damage to Henan province is being verified and assessed. Many of our audience has asked, are there more floods and other so-called natural disasters in China in 2021 compared to an average year? The Chinese official report said, compared to the average value of the same period in the past five years, the number of missing persons, the number of emergency relocations, the number of collapsed buildings, and the direct economic losses due to the disaster have increased by 38%, 30%, 5%, and 21% respectively. The Communist Party's figures have been carefully trimmed to minimize the severity of the situation. Even with these figures, it is clear that China suffered unprecedented floods and hurricanes in July. The month of August is also not optimistic. China's Ministry of Emergency Management released National Natural Disaster Risk Situation in August. It says precipitation in northern areas will continue to be high with the Yellow River and High River basins likely to experience super floods exceeding warning limit and many rivers in the south likely to experience regional flash floods. That is to say, the risk of flooding remains high throughout China in August. The report reminds to guard against the risk of internal flooding in cities caused by local heavy rainfall combined with external flooding into the city and external water upstream. External flooding into the city and external water upstream is a new term coined by the Chinese government which should refer to the discharge of flood water from the reservoir. The Chinese Premier Li Keqiang said in a video conference on flood control and drought relief on July 26, the aim is to improve emergency response capabilities and the public's awareness of self-protection. He was hinting that Chinese officials often secretly released reservoirs at night, a fact he could not point out directly. What is really scary about heavy rainfall is not the rainfall itself, but the water released by reservoirs without warning. Especially for people who live in low-lying areas near the reservoirs, they may not escape if they don't take early precautions. The CCP has been building water reservoirs feverishly since it seized power in 1949, with nearly 100,000 dams built to date. On August 14th, Bloomberg reported that the top Communist Party leader Xi planned to remove 40,000 small hydro stations. The report reads, in 2018, after Xi visited the Yangtze region and Qinling Mountains in the northwest and called for better environmental protection, a national campaign was launched to remove or improve 40,000 small hydro stations. The news that Xi Jinping is going to blow up the dam has become one of the most trending topics in the Chinese community. For the Communist Party's top brass, Blowing up dams is easier said than done as it is entangled with its corrupted bureaucracy. It is a problem created by the CCP that they cannot solve. <laughs>